Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for Thursday, the 11th of April. I'd like to follow along. Evening prayer begins on page 117. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 18, verses 21 through 50. The Lord rewarded me because of my righteous dealing. Because my hands were clean, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not offended against my God. For all his judgments are before my eyes, and his decrees I have not put away from me. For I have been blameless with him and have kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord rewarded me according to my righteous dealing, because of the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the faithful you show yourself faithful, O God. With the forthright you show yourself forthright. With the pure you show yourself pure, but with the crooked you are wily. You will save a lowly people, but you will humble the haughty eyes. You, O Lord, are my lamp. My God, you make my darkness bright. With you I will break down an enclosure. With the help of my God I will scale any wall. As for God, his ways are perfect. The words of the Lord are tried in the fire, but he is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God but the Lord? Who is the rock except our God? It is God who girds me about with strength and makes my way secure. He makes me sure-footed like a deer, and lets me stand firm on the heights. He trains my hands for battle, and my arms for bending even a bow of bronze. You have given me your shield of victory. Your right hand also sustains me. Your loving care makes me great. You lengthen my stride beneath me, and my ankles do not give way. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I will not turn back till I have destroyed them. I strike them down, they cannot rise. They fall defeated at my feet. You have girded me with strength for the battle. You have cast down my adversaries beneath me. You have put my enemies to flight. I destroy those who hate me. They cry out, but there is none to help them. They cry to the Lord, but he does not answer. I beat them small like dust before the wind. I trample them like mud in the streets. You deliver me from the strife of the peoples. You put me at the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. No sooner shall they hear than they shall obey me. Strangers will cringe before me. The foreign peoples will lose heart. They shall come trembling out of their strongholds. The Lord lives. Blessed is my rock. Exalted is the God of my salvation. He is the God who gave me victory and cast down the peoples beneath me. You rescued me from the fury of my enemies. You exalted me above those who rose against me. You saved me from my deadly foe. Therefore will I extol you among the nations, O Lord, and sing praises to your name. He multiplies the victories of his king. He shows loving kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Exodus. As Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the murmuring of the people of Israel. 
Say to them, At twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around about the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as hoarfrost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every one of you as much as as they can. You shall take an omer apiece, according to the number of the persons whom each of you has in their tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, the one that had gathered much had nothing over, and the one that had gathered little had no lack. Each gathered according to what they could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it till the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as they could. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. The word of the Lord. This lesson from Exodus is a wonderful lesson about providence and how our own relation to providence can work. So there's a couple things that I think are worth our exploring a little bit. The first, it talks about Aaron speaking to the whole congregation of Israel, and they looked toward the wilderness, toward what is a desolate place. So their attention is turned toward a place that is empty, that is, a, that is relatively lifeless, or at least that is not very conducive to or supportive of life. And it's towards the wilderness, when the people look towards the wilderness, that's where they see the glory of God appear. And so there are times in our lives when we're faced with adversity, there are times in our lives when we're faced with what we think are conditions that are not life-giving, conditions that challenge us or that can put us in despair, can put us in confusion the wildernesses of our lives. But if we're willing to look toward the wilderness of our lives in faith, sometimes that is exactly where we will find the presence of God. And when we go looking, when we go looking for sustenance, when we go looking for God's presence or that which is going to help us through that wilderness of our life, that is where God's providence comes into play. And the story of Exodus, it's a great lesson for us, the story of Exodus tells us that God does provide. He provides food for the people of Israel. Not in the way that they expected. If you remember, when they first see the manna, this sort of flaky substance that's on the ground, they have no idea what it is. What could it possibly be? And in the same way, somehow God's providence comes to us in in ways that we don't always immediately understand. When whenever we're faced with adversity and whenever we're faced with challenges in our life and we ask God for help, sometimes that that help comes in a way that we're not really able to recognize up front and immediately, and it's only over time or only in retrospect that we go, oh, that's where God was at work in my life. The same thing happens with the people of Israel. They are wondering what this stuff is. They realize, okay, we've got it. And they go and they try to collect as much as they possibly can. They try to take advantage of God's providence. And they try to make sure that they'll have it for the next day or have it for uh, more than they need. And the reality, again, for us, spiritually, God gives us what we need. When we turn to God and we ask God for help, God's providence does not fail. No, it does not always come to us in the way that we want. It does not always work out in the way that we expect that it will, but it always does work. The flip side of that, though, is we can't always predict how it's going to work. And we can't sort of say, oh, well, the lesson that I learned from God's providence helping, helping me through the most recent challenge is always going to apply to the next one. The specific situations of life change every single day. And every single day, every single time we're faced with adversity, every single time we're faced with another challenge in life, God's providence is always at work, but it's not always going to be at work in the same way. So we can't take the lessons that we learned from last time and say, this is exactly how it's going to go. This is exactly how it's going to work out. Because that just doesn't work. That's not the way that providence functions. God comes to us now, in the here and now, meets us exactly where we are, and gives us what we need 
in the moment. Even though we can't always see that it's working out in the moment, God's providence is always at work. And that is a wonderful lesson for us to, to remember as we continue our way through this Easter season. That the resurrection of Jesus has changed the world. The resurrection of Jesus has changed us. It has changed everything about the universe and especially our place in it. We don't always appreciate that reality. We don't appreciate how that providence has affected our lives and the way in which we interact with the world. But it has. It has changed everything. And so we can, if we lean into, and if we're willing to trust that that change has happened, that the providence of God is upon us, that the grace of God has covered us, and that we are walking in faith, that we are walking in the light of the resurrection, that does have an effect on how we can see ourselves, how we can see others, how we can see any situation in life, whether it be joyful or whether it be challenging, whether it be disastrous. It changes how we can approach the world and how we can understand our place in the world, in the light of that resurrection of Christ from the dead. It's the greatest gift of providence, better than manna, better than quails. The resurrection from, from the dead is what is given to us this season. We, we remember it especially and we give thanks to God that we have been covered by that joy and bathed in that light. And for that we can say thanks be to God. We continue with the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Almighty God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. 
Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joys, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the road rise to meet you, may the wind be ever at your back. May the silver light of the moon guide your steps in the darkness and the crickets sing you on your way home. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>